ding, ding. Okay, we took a brief break there because I was trying to find the cranial nerves because they're not in the textbook anymore. So, um, I found them on Google. Google is your friend. You can come up with a mnemonic as to whether they are mixed nerves or motor or sensory. Um, and Google actually gave me a mnemonic for the 12 cranial nerves, and it is, some say more money, but my brother says big books matter more. Ha <laughs> ha, how's that? First you gotta memorize the cranial nerves in order, then, then that'll make sense. So, the first cranial nerve is the olfactory nerve. What do you think the olfactory nerve is responsible for? It's responsible for smell. Okay, how about the second cranial nerve? What's it called? Oh, wait, it's okay. Second one's called the optic nerve. And what is the optic nerve responsible for? Yeah, it's responsible for sight. Okay, the third cranial nerve is called the oculomotor. And what is that responsible for? It's in the it's in the name. Break it down. Something movement. Something movement, yeah. Or ocularism. It's responsible for eye movement. Something movement was right. Good job. Okay, then you have the trochlear. This one doesn't make sense. It is also responsible for eye movement. Then we have the trigeminal. This is responsible for motor and sensory in your face. responsible for your expressions and for sensory. Both in your face. Okay, number eight. This is quite a mouthful. This is your vestibulocochlear. Possible for hearing. Yeah, it is. It's responsible for hearing and balance. What gave it away, Corey? Uh, cochlear. Yep. All right, number nine. Number nine is your glossopharyngeal. Glossopharyngeal nerve responsible for? Swallowing. Swallowing, and what else? Gag reflex. Gag reflex? It's responsible for everything that has to do with your throat and your tongue, both motor and sensory. Okay, hey, how about your vagus nerve? Number 10 is your vagus nerve. What is your vagus nerve responsible for? Have 
Have you ever heard of a vasovagal response? No? I would show you, but we're on video, and I don't want that recorded either. Okay, so your vagus nerve is responsible for the response of your parasympathetic nervous system. When elderly people are on the toilet, and they're having a really, really, really hard time going to the bathroom, and they bear down, and they bear down, and they bear down, and all of a sudden they pass out, it's because their vagus nerve has been stimulated, and it's caused their heart rate to lower. So if you ever need to lower your own heart rate, you can pretend like you're taking a duke, and that'll slow your heart rate down. Truth. All right. Your 11th nerve. That's a horrible X. It's called the accessory nerve. What is the accessory nerve responsible for? It's responsible for head, neck, shoulder movement, and swallowing. And then last, but definitely not least, our 12th cranial nerve is our hypoglossal nerve. And what is that nerve responsible for? If someone's having trouble with any of these things, you may know why. Yeah, if, if you have a patient who presents with a sign, let's say they suddenly have lost their sense of smell. After a head injury, they've suddenly lost their sense of smell. Can you determine, perhaps, where in their brain their injury is at? You could if you knew how to map the brain out and figure out. But if they present with a head injury and their only sign is that they suddenly don't have a sense of smell, is that something you should be worried about? Yeah. 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 So the fact that they've lost their sense of smell, you know that there's a nerve in that brain that makes it so that they can smell. And if they've lost their sense of smell, then it's possible that they've done some damage to their olfactory nerve. And we care about that because we care about our patients. Do we have to have these all memorized? You don't need to have them all memorized. You should have a pretty good idea that they exist, but you don't need to have them all memorized. Okay. leave where, like 
At C3 is the nerve that controls diaphragm. At C4 is the diaphragm and shoulder shrugging. At C5 is the deltoid. C6 is wrist extension. C7 is triceps. And C8 is hands and fingers. And we're not talking about the actual cervical vertebrae, but we're talking about the gaps between the vertebrae. That's why there's more gaps than there are vertebrae. Make sense? Does that make sense? Okay. So if you Google um, spinal nerves, it will help you. It'll help you learn where those nerves are at. Can you print that out? I yeah, I can try. It's not going to be pretty. Save image as desktop. Maybe I can send it to the color printer. Print. Send it to the color printer. Do you want to copy too, Corey? Yes, please. So that's our conversation about cranial nerves. You can press stop again.